everyone and welcome back to Rain and Kate. So today's video is a very personal one. Um, I think this is the first time I've shared a personal story on my YouTube channel. I know I shared this uh, story on a blog post before. Um, this was like around this time last year I talked about it for a blog post but I thought it would make a nice um, kind of talky story as well because you know, if you don't enjoy reading um, blog posts or reading in general, it might be better just to talk to you face to face about it and actually just express how it is through video um, and what I went through, etc. And I just thought it'd be a nice little story time video and also an advice uh, kind of video for those out there who um, either had it done to them before or I've been going through it, obviously I don't wish anyone to go through it, um, or just want some general advice and tips on how to prevent themselves from uh, falling victim of fraud, mobile phone fraud is obviously the title that you can see. So yeah, so it's like a nice kind of, or it's not a nice story, but it is a advice kind of story time post. So I have my cup of tea, uh, maybe you want to get one too. I don't have no set of structure for this video, I'm just going to talk uh, from start to finish. I hope I don't ramble on too long because I don't want it to be a, a really long video. Um, but I just want to kind of get the story out, get to the advice and yeah that's how it is. So the story starts, um, this was probably at the, yeah, not probably, it was at the end of 2016 when my contract was due an upgrade. Now I, um, I, I have a contract with O2, I got it on a friends and family discount through my younger sister who um, basically is the person behind this mobile phone fraud thing. Um, we don't talk anymore, I don't know where she is, I don't know what's going on with her life, <sighs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I got the contract through her, we were, you know, we were close sisters, I wouldn't say we were um, always arguing or we didn't get along or anything, we were, we were fine, like we, we're just family, like family's family. You don't do things like this to family, but um, that's how it was. I mean, it was her at the end of it all. So I had come to the end of my contract and I wasn't actually planning to do to have an upgrade. Um, I was just planning to ride my contract out and just possibly get a new phone and not have to change my contract and stuff like that. So I was pretty happy with the contract I was on, didn't want to change. But um, my sister called me and said, um, you know, hey, I'm your contract's up, did you want to upgrade? You know, I can get a new iPhone 7, it's gonna have this, this and that, and you know, you can keep to the same contract, you don't have to change, um, it'll be fine, and whether I wanted to do it. And I was like, well, of course I want a new phone because my phone is old and slow. Um, so I was like thinking about it and I was like, yeah, actually I would could do with a new phone. Um, and if I could keep the same contract, that'd be great because then, you know, I just I just want the phone really. So she was like, yeah, I can do it for you, no problem, blah, 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 blah. So okay, I was like, okay, so that was fine. The next day um, she called me or texted me and I said, have you thought about it? Do you want to do it? And I said, yeah, okay, fine, I'll do it. So um, what she said was, she said to me that she was in the store and um, cause she actually worked for O2, well not knowing, I actually didn't know that she changed job. Um, so she started working for O2 and then Carfin Warehouse and then I don't know where she probably I don't even know what happened in the end because I don't I didn't even go and find out or whatnot um but uh she said to me she was in the store and that she could do the contract and upgrade while I, whilst I was not there so I was like oh that's a bit weird because every time I've been in to do an upgrade or get a new phone or anything I needed to be there like I personally needed to be there uh, to do it she goes oh, no it's fine you should give me your details on the phone so I was like okay fine um I didn't think anything of it because she's my sister. Like, why would I think anything less of that? Why would I not trust her? Um, so I was like, okay, fine. I was on the phone to her. She said, we're gonna send, they're gonna send you a code. And I just need that four digit code from the text message she's gonna send you. And I was like, okay, fine. Sent me a text, gave her the code. She was in the store, she was doing it. The next, she needed my security question answer. So I gave that to her as well. Not thinking anything of it because as far as I know, I was just getting an upgrade and she was my sister. Um, and then next minute I was like, 
she said she's going to call me back and that was fine and then I got text another text message saying congratulations you've signed up to this and this and this you've got this phone that phone and I was like oh okay I was like oh but the contract says it's like £34 or something like that because I, I mean I don't pay that much um so I, I spoke to her again I rang her and I was like why is my contract saying £34 she goes oh no it was a mistake he put through the wrong contract it's gonna it's gonna um reset itself on Monday so I was like okay so today was that day was Friday and then I had to wait for the weekend and then call up again on, I mean, wait for it to reset on Monday. And I was like, okay, fine. So I've, I said, have you got my phone? And she said, yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, I want to come collect it. And she was like, oh, um, she goes, yeah, okay, um, I'm, um, can you come and collect it on Monday or Tuesday? And I was like, okay, but I want, but I'm free the weekend, so I can come and collect it the weekend. She goes, no, no, no. Uh, wait for the re thing to reset and then I've got the phone and I'll give you the phone on Monday. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Still, I didn't think anything of it because you know, I was I was not happy with my phone, but I was still my phone was still working, so I had no problems with that. And I was like, okay, fine. So she then said to me if Dan wanted to Dan, my fiance wanted to do it as well. So I was like, yeah, I know Dan's doing an upgrade as well because we signed up around the same time. Um, so he. I said, yeah, I think so. Maybe he wants to do it, but he, again, same like me, doesn't want to sign on a new contract, just wants to say, keep the same contract. So he, so I gave him her number, uh, I gave her his number, so she texted him herself and went through the same thing. Um, so that was that, and then, but the thing is, like, Dan has a Samsung phone and she had upgraded him to an iPhone, so basically his connection on his phone went because knowing the story now what happened was as soon as he activated the contract on the iPhone on Dan's phone it cut off whatever line he had on his Samsung so as soon as she did that his line cut off and he had no connection only he could only message me through WhatsApp on Wi-Fi um, so he was like my phone connection's gone are oh, your sister's sorting out the contract blah, blah 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 and I was like okay and then she said to him oh yeah wait until Monday and it will reset and then that he had that the wrong contract was put through again and I was like well that's a bit odd because she put through the wrong contract for me so hmm okay fine um so that was the end of the day by that time so Dan's line has still not come back because she said to him uh, it might, it'll come back today maybe later or wait until one day so we we're like okay fine so at the end of the day it still didn't come back and we tried to message her and say what's going on why is the line not coming back she was still messaging back saying oh yeah no everything's fine um everything's still cool so we were kind of reassured by her as such, but then still the next day now we went on to Saturday and Dan's line still hadn't come back and my phone was still showing the £34 contract um, and, the seven, and the, it was a £40 for the phone a month. So in total it was £70 a month I was meant to be upgraded to on this thing. Um, and yeah, so by the Saturday we were starting to feel a bit uneasy now. We were like, why is this so odd? And then we tried to message her again and say we want to come to the store and sort this out. She didn't message us back. We spent the whole day trying to contact her. She didn't call us. So we went to where we thought she worked, went into the store, asked them what was going on, um, as in where she is, and they said that she doesn't work there. And we were like, oh, okay, fine. So we left, we went, then went to her house, uh, which is like my, she's actually my half sister. So we went to my stepmom's house and um, we asked her what was going on. And then she was a bit, my, this is my stepmom. She was a bit like, why did you give her any details? You shouldn't have done that. You should have just sorted it out yourself. And I was like, well, why would I not do it? As in, why would I not? do it with Joe because she did it for me before and why would I have no I had no reason to not believe her and she was like oh you shouldn't have done it you shouldn't have done it oh ring up O2 now get it get it cancelled and I was like why is there something that you know about this sort of thing um and then she looked like kind of a bit stressed um about it all and she was just kept telling us to do this and do that and then you need to cancel it you need to do this and we were like what's going on so we 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 contacted her um boyfriend as far as from then we found out that they're not together anymore and then so on and so forth we found out lots of things throughout that day of of stuff that we didn't know about so apparently she had left home she left her daughter um she left her boyfriend she left her family so that was that um, she just went able and but you know as far as i know i didn't know that so we um we then knew something was definitely up so we called O2 and we put in a fraud case through um, because it was fraud. 
in terms of it now since that we got signed up to a contract that we didn't give permission for well in a sense you would say we did give commission for permission we did give permission for because we gave her our details but the fact that she went into a shop pretended to be us and that's that's how this is how the story has unfolded basically she went into the store she pretended to be us she had a guy with her so the guy did Dan's contract she did my contract she pretended to be us she went forward to the shop and said I'm Julie these are my details I want to upgrade um, and for that whole time obviously she was you know she was texting me and asking me for the code and all that stuff so that was when she was giving over the details so the operate the operator on the other side or the service person either I don't know I still don't know whether they were in on it as well or they were just oblivious to what was going on like uh, they didn't question why she was answering the phone all the time and then giving the code over or every time they said can I have the code or the security answer she was looking at her phone and giving it to them so whatever happened I don't know if the people in the store were also sorry got a bit of hair on my mouth were also, also like in on this so I don't know um sorry oops sorry. there it is gone um yeah so that was that and then we rang out we put a case in with O2 we they we were told that it was going to take 10 days to um swell so we were like okay well that's fine with me because I still got my because I have an iPhone and she upgraded to an iPhone technically my number still worked because it was an iPhone um, but on Dan's phone his phone didn't work so he said to them I like you need to send me a new sim card or, or whatnot I need something because I need my phone so um, they sent him a new sim card and he had he got his line back um, and they cancelled obviously the other two fraud phones that had been taken out in our names that were not with us stolen whatnot um, the case went on I think maybe three days or four days in I rang up again Dan did the same we spoke to people on the phone and they were like oh we're still investigating but we're really unsure how she this person managed to get your code and get in through because of security system and I said and that's when I actually said to them it was her like I told them that it was this was the story and they turned around and said oh well in this case there's nothing they can do it's a civil matter I've got to take it up with the police so I was like what do you mean there's nothing you can do you have your security system is basically rubbish and you allowed someone else to go in and pretend to be me and take a contract out they said no it's fine normally we allowed um we allowed friends and family to come in and do it on your behalf and I was like well that's a bit stupid because that means your security system your security procedure is just like any any Tom Dick and Harry can just walk into the shop and say I'm that person here it is let's do it well no that's not right um, furthermore into this into the case I had miss um, information from different advisors from the O2 that yes it was okay that one person that your friend and family your friends and family can go in and do upgrade your contract no they can't yes they can no they can't yes they can no they can't so different advisors told me different things so surely there's a flaw in their training system or or whatnot on how they're giving the information to customers and being a premium customer that I was I didn't get any special treatment or whatnot apart maybe from answering the phone quicker but still they basically just said to me it was my own fault that I gave my code over now you've got to sort it out yourself so I was left in that situation frustrated and stressed over it all um, and then I ended up going to the police because there's no way that I was going to let this go so I went to the police reported the case they said I needed to report it online for action fraud um, dad did the same we basically went through the same procedure um, they all the, the whole time they said to both of us that it was our own fault that we did it um not they didn't say that like, it's your fault that you you did it they just basically said they weren't gonna help us any further with this case because we gave the code over so that code is apparently permission for someone else to enter into your account and do what they want to do to your phone or to your to your account or to your contract so we were then told we were allowed to complain through a higher complaints team at the O2 um, so we were like yeah we're going to do that so we both wrote letters and sent it off to the higher complaints team this took um, maybe a month or, some, or something for them to get back to us so considering all throughout all that time we were paying this higher higher paid contracts I was paying 70 pounds a month a stark contrast from when I was paying 15 pound uh, a month for my contract so yeah we were paying for this contract that we didn't ask for and a phone that we don't even have 
so I um, right, well, we both wrote to high complaints we put that through they came back to Dan first and they said it was good news that they recognised that it was a mistake um, on their behalf and they were going to revert his um, contract and everything and that was that but the amount of stress and anxiety it caused him was just atrocious like that a family member could do that to us um my letter came back with negative it was the fact that because she had went in and they legit thought that um, they they basically she proved everything that it was of me that that was that caused them it caused it to be okay for them to give her the contract so in a sense it didn't really make sense in the letter that they wrote back to me to say that oh yeah it was a training issue as well that the misinformation they gave me was wrong they're going to look into training their staff better that that uh, but in terms of um, reverting my contract they weren't going to do it because basically it was still my fault so I then <laughs> At that point I thought what the hell is going on like why am I going through this um, it, it was just it was just so bad um, it was over Christmas as well and yeah it was it was not very nice and throughout the, all those months I had been trying to speak to the police about it I just wanted something to be done to her or to to whatever I just wanted something to be sorted I don't want to be paying this higher contract and I just wanted my old contract back so in the end I ended up um, contacting the financial um, bureau are they called no the ombudsman that's it I went to the ombudsman and um, yeah so they did a great job and I won my case so that took a month again another month I think by the time it was end of January was when I got my reply from the ombudsman and um yeah it it was the, the, the happiest news I got that year basically and I, mean, I know it was only the start of 2017 but it was just like it was just a great a great thing um so yeah so in that case I had then spoke to O2 again and I said to them that it was appalling how they treated me and uh, the fact that I always had misinformation that they were trying to push the, the fault and the blame onto me that they didn't want to have anything to do with the case because it was not their problem um, they were just really bad in terms of the customer service and and just the way that they treated the case for both mine and Dan's um, I was just yeah in, in in a bad place in a bad way at that point because of all this and um it was just not a nice situation to be in really especially when it's done by a family member so yeah so that was that and then it went on for longer because what ended up happening was that my friends my close friends that she also knew started to get their phones done as well so I don't know if I'm gonna how much more detail I'm gonna go into that those stories because I know I'm aware that this video is super long at the moment. Uh, but slowly, each of one of my um, friends started to get the same stuff. So they started to get those text messages come through to asking for their security codes. They then got their messages saying, "Congrats, you signed up to a contract," even without them being there. Like they didn't even react to those messages. As soon as they got those messages, they called up, called up O2 and said, someone's trying to hack my phone. Because by that time, our, my, our stories was already embedded into their heads. So as soon as they knew, if they got those messages, they needed to act fast. So as soon as they got it, they called up O2 and said, someone's trying to, someone's trying to hack into my phone or someone's trying to upgrade on my behalf. I'm not there, I'm not them. Can you stop it? By that time, by the time O2 acted on it, it was already too late. She had managed to get maybe three or four phones out of all, all the different friends that, circle friends that we all knew. Um, it was that bad. Like it was, she was on a roll with every single person that she knew the details of. And I don't even know how she managed to do all of this. Um, it, it was just, it was just so bad. So obviously each one of the friends managed to get their contract reverted back and everything. And then it happened to me again. 
So the second time she tried to do this, I was just at home, I got a text message through, and as soon as I got that text message through, I ran up O2 and I said, look, you guys are meant to have put my account on the highest fraud watch. Why is this able to happen again? Happen again? And they said, no, 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 we're, we're fine. Nothing, nothing suspicious on the account at the moment. And I was like, well, why have I got this text message? And they're like, okay, we're gonna, um, it's shown somewhere, I don't, I'm not gonna reveal the location, but it was shown that this text message was generated from this store. And I was like, well, I'm at home, I'm not in that store, so that's not me, cancel it. Um, so they're like, fine, we've, we've put a, a note on your account to see that if anyone tries to get into your account again, we'll flag down. I was like okay fine. Well a few days later I then got the text message again. So at this point I was at work and I was like oh my god like, I, can't, I can't be dealing with this I need to act fast and I need to go and sort this out. So I spoke to my manager he was like fine go and do what you need to do. So I went and sat in a meeting room and I rang O2 and I said to O2 look someone's trying to get into my account stop it and they were like okay um, she went into the account and she said that this person tried to get into my account nine times and nine times typed or gave the wrong password. Don't you think that should flag up to O2 and be like, well, why is this person putting their account password in nine times wrong? And apparently on the 10th time she was able to get in, this was in store, she was able to, uh, not, I'm, I'm not sure if she answered the right question or whatnot because she would have still got it wrong. Um, so this was make me think, this made me think that the, someone was working with her in the store and just said let's just bypass everything and take you through. So she went in, uh, went into my account and she proceeded to upgrade another, a contract on top of another contract. Um, I think she tried to take out another contract for another iPhone 7. So I said that's not me in store, you need to stop that person and the lady on the phone this time, she was really good. She actually rang up the store that she was in and said, stop that transaction going through because it's fraud. The manager of the store managed to go out of the shop. She was still there. My sister was still there in the shop and they were actually bagging up the phone ready for her to take it. The manager went up to the store assistant and said, that phone is not being sold. Um, we've got to take it back. So at that point, she was still on, the store manager was still on the phone to the OT advisor and the OT advisor could hear her saying, what are you doing, why are you taking my phone away, I'm buying that phone. And then the manager said, no, sorry, this has been taken, we've taken this away. So apparently at the point she ran out of the shop. So yeah. So I was able to stop that second to happening to me the second time um, and that was a legit fraud case because she had no permission, she went straight into the store pretending to be me. Um, so what I found out was that she actually tried, she went into the store and said to the store advisor, her sim's not working, her sim's broken, can she get a new one? Um, so that then gives her if, if she is able to get into my account and the store assistant was able to issue a new SIM card, she was able to take that SIM card, pull it into the phone that she had, whatever phone she had, and then say to the store assistant, oh, thanks for um, giving me my SIM. I'm, I'm actually planning to get an upgrade. Do you think we could do an upgrade now? So at that point, my SIM would have cut off. The new SIM with my number would have been in her new phone and that the fact the store assistant could have sent, yeah, I've just got to give you to go through the security and send you that text message. So he would send the text, he or she would send the text message and then that would go to her, that phone that she had and she was able to just freely go, yep, yeah, this is the code, these are my details. And whereas my SIM card would have cut off, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so it was just, at that point, it was just so easy. I don't know how easy it is nowadays. I mean, that was two years ago. I don't know if they've put in this, more measures whatnot but yeah I managed to stop it in time and she ran out of the shop and then I haven't heard from her since or anything about her since so I don't know what's going on with her life um yeah so since then I rang up after that case I rang up O2 and I was like I like am appalled at your service at how you was able to let this happen again a second time and they obviously apologize and everything and now I apparently my account is on the highest fraud level watch which um, thankfully nothing has happened since then uh, and I hope that it's working um, but yeah it was it was just horrible and the fact that it happened to Dan to our other friends um, her family she's done it to her mum quite a few times um, yeah yeah, it's just she's done it to like all her close friends all her close friends that i know of um have all disowned her and don't talk to her and i don't know who she hangs out with now and what her life is like um but yeah that is the story um in terms of 
how to prevent yourself from um, falling for fraud, mobile phone fraud yourself. Obviously, I'm not sure what network you, you're with, um, but I was with O2. And um, the thing is, what you need to do if anything suspicious happens that you know, like whether you get emails, text messages, phone calls, to say that this person has tried to access your account or this security code has been generated, act fast. Like, you need to do it very quickly if you can uh, because the likelihood that someone else is at currently in your account trying to upgrade or get a phone out in your name is very likely so try to act fast as soon as you get that message don't ignore it call up your provider and say to them that something's happening um, the other advice tip i would say is to put secu extra security measures in onto your account whether it's like an extra password an extra code an extra what not whether something that is definitely only you would know about it or only your closest people would know no one else like not not something generic like your mum's maiden name or your, car, your first car or whatever stuff like that something that you would know yourself that you can answer it and no one else can answer it um and the last bit of advice is if you if you really can switch to another provider or switch to sim only or uh, pay as you go you know they they can't hack into that because there's no contract. Um, yeah, that's my three bits of advice that you um, can take if you'd like to. Um, I am still with O2 because of the fact that I had my case sorted and I'm happy with what I got, so I'm currently still with them. If I if they didn't sort it out or if they didn't give me what I needed at the end of it, I probably would have switched um, because I didn't want to stay with someone or a network that wasn't going to value their customers. Um, but yeah, so that is the end of my story and I do believe it is a very long one. So I'm going to try to edit it so it might not be that long, but you know, it's, the, it's a full story. So I like to imagine that you probably watched to the end um, but thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your time um, i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful um, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you're new but if you are subscribed <laughs> then i will see you again soon in my next video bye guys